Hey guys, Mike Kentucky Range Time, back with another episode of our 357 mag gel block test series uh, where we're testing 357 uh, bullets and loadings in five different barrel lengths. Uh, Rossi 20 inch uh, R92 lever action, uh, Taurus tracker and a six and a half Ruger GP100 in a five inch, Rossi RP63 in a three inch and, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the Rossi two inch snub nose. This episode is going to be just a little bit different. We've been doing factory made bullets uh, up until now, and I'm getting ready to break that mold with this bullet right here. This is a, a 158 grain mold from Lee, and, uh, and so it's a 359, I think, diameter, 359 158. But these actually are dropping. Uh, at 162 grains, so I'm four grains heavier than what the mold was designed to. <clears throat> so uh, you'll see that note <clears throat> in my spreadsheet later on. And uh, so I, I dropped these, uh, quenched them in ice water when I dropped them, and originally had a Brunel hardness of around 18. And uh, and then I came back and I, I powder coated these things with, uh, with some black powder coating. Uh, I actually have some of these that I have swaged all the way down to 0.35 seven because they drop at 359 um <clears throat> at 357 that i was actually loading a subsonic nine millimeter and they worked very well so anyway just a extra tidbit there so uh let's get turned around here and take a quick look at the loading and then we'll get out to the range and i will say this it was a fairly quick shooting session uh, I got some data. I did not get a complete data set on this, as you'll see on the spreadsheet later on. All right, guys. Here is the loading, and since this is a this is the Porter's version of this, uh, I don't have a box to go with this. But H uh, one ten powder from Hodgson CCI small pistol magnum primers, as usual. And here is a closer look at this bullet, and uh, you can see here about how much this thing's done in the case. And these have been cast for a while. Uh, I actually had some of these, I had five or six of these uh, that I had at the range the other day and I actually ran out. I, I did not get good velocities on a couple of these because I didn't have enough of these to shoot. But uh, I came back in and started digging through all my drawers and everything. And I actually found a small tray of about 15 or 20 of these that I had not loaded yet. So I went ahead and loaded these just to finish the video out with. So, all right, so here's the spreadsheet. Those gray boxes are boxes I did not have that in. This thing will be posted up a little bit later uh, at the end of the video, uh, be in the slides. And I think I've been putting about 15 seconds on these so that you guys can pause and look through the data if you'd like. So let's get out to the range. All right, next up is uh, a little departure from what we've been doing. We've been doing a lot of the Hornady bullets up to now. And uh, this actually is a... Um, cast bullet that, that I cast and powder coated. This is off the Lee 158 grain mold. And uh, just curious what it's doing here. Uh, it is powder coated, so I, I don't feel any issues running it pretty hard and fast out of this, this 20 inch rifle barrel. So uh, let's get started and see. More than likely, this is gonna be a complete pass through. Uh, I have flipped the gel block around so that all of our previous wound tracks from our last video are on the far end. So we'll be able to see at least the temporary wound cavity that we get from this round uh, in the front end of this in, in clean gel. And that's really what I want to see here. This round is probably about an 18 to 19 Brunel hardness. All right, let's see what we get. All right, velocity of 1,726 foot per second. I've had this load, actually I only had six of these left, just enough to run this test with. And uh, it's a load I did a while back and I don't even remember what the power charge was. I'll look that up and have more information on that um, when we get it. But uh, yeah, decent velocities. Let's go see if we got a catch. All right, our wind track starts right here, and we actually had quite a bit going on with this bullet. Uh, I'm surprised 
at, at what we're showing here. This thing opened up. We have a nice, large, fairly long temporary wound cavity and tracks down through here. And we're laying at about 20 and three quarter inches of overall penetration. And take a look at this. This thing has opened up nicely. So, uh, I, I'm surprised. I, I didn't expect this much expansion and I expected it to zip right on through. So like I said, I drop cast these into, into ice water when I cast these, but there, it's been several years old. They were about an 18 Brunel uh, when I dropped them. And I know that when you quench bullets like that, they do soften up over time uh, as the metal on there uh, tends to uh, even out the stresses on that. So the Brunel on this may be a little less than 18 now. And with this expansion, it looks like it's just about in the right spot. And this is my slow-mo camera over here. I've been having issues with, uh, with it overheating from the sunlight, so I'm covering it up in between shots. All right, next up, 158 grain cast powder-coated bullet from yours truly in the Taurus six and a half inch tractor. <laughs> Velocity of 1278. Let's go check it out. All right, wound track with the Taurus six and a half inch starts right here. And this bullet slopes down through the gel block all the way down and exits 32 inches. Um, expansion doesn't look like there was much expansion, not nearly like what we had on the rifle. And, uh, I'm going to guess that from here on, these bullets are, are probably not going to expand like they did with the rifle and all, if not the rest of these barrels are going to be a shoot through, but, uh, we'll go make sure and at least shoot one out of each. All right, guys, we'll, uh. We'll run one of these out of each one of these just to check velocities, nothing else. This is uh, the Ruger GP100 with the 158 grain cast powder coat bullet. I did not get a velocity on that one. We did not get a catch as well as expected. Uh, I've got three of these left. I'm going to go ahead and shoot one each in the other two revolvers. And, uh, and then if we have one left, I'll come back and try to get a velocity on the GP100. So definitely got a shoot through on that one. I saw the dust flap on the backstop. Again, no velocity reading. All right, not real sure what happened with that. I am gonna move this Garmin back in the shade here a little bit cause it is getting pretty warm. And we will go ahead and try to uh, get one of these with the snub nose. to shoot through 938.5 foot per second all right I got one left the five inch or the three inch let's try the three inch
we know that the Taurus and the, the GP100 have been running fairly close in velocity, so I, I'm more curious about what the three inch velocity is gonna look like than I am the, the five inch out of the Ruger. Got an issue going on with the Garmin, it appears. I really don't think our velocity was 1,892 foot per second out of that three inch barrel. So something's going on with the Garmin, either overheating or something. So I'll have to check that out and uh, we'll follow up with it later. So, all right, so here's a recovered bullet, and uh, as you can tell, we got some really nice expansion. Now, this was uh, the only catch we got, and it was from the 20-inch rifle. And uh, I was surprised that we got this much expansion out of this. And, and actually, once I pulled this out and compared it to some of the other uh, bullet weights that we shot, the 158s, this this bullet performed really well at the velocities this rifle was sending it at. Uh, this mushroom head and this this expansion was comparable to the the, the full metal jacket or, or the jacket of the hollow points, uh, the XTP hollow points that we were running, the 158 XTP. So, uh, you know, really impressive results out of the cast bullet. So there it is, and uh, you know, one of the original reasons that I got into this caliber was because this is a really good caliber to cast bullets for, uh, especially with these revolvers. Uh, 38s and 357s, 158 grain bullet. If you're running a, you know, a, a short three, four inch barrel revolver, the chances of you pushing these hard enough to, up to the point where you might need a gas check is, is not very likely, especially for powder coating these bullets and seal on the back end of that lead with, with, the, with the polymer. So these make a really good prepping caliber. Uh, whether you're running in a rifle or a pistol, this is a, a bullet that and caliber that you can cast at home if you need to and load your own ammunition. When, when factory ammo and factory bullets are not available, you know, you can always still cast this bullet. And, and that's was my original draw to start casting. Uh, I started out casting for nine millimeter and then this was actually the second mold I bought uh, right after I started casting it was this 158 grain. And actually I get the bonus four grains out of it because my mold drops them a little heavy with the, with the lead and the mix I'm using on my lead. So uh, anyway, that's a plus. Um, 18 Brunel, I, I, that's borderline for what I consider to be hard cast. So, um, you know, we got hard cast performance out of everything but the, uh, the 20 inch rifle. And if you watch the wound channels on the gel block, I did get slow motion shots. Um, been struggling with some of those lately, <laughs> but uh, right on down, I mean, we, we had a decent temporary wound cavity, even with the two inch Rossi. I mean, it wasn't as big, but a definite step up from the two inch to the three inch uh, as far as the temporary wound cavity. And not only on the front end, there's also a large uh, temporary wound cavity on the back end that opened up on a couple of those pass-through shots. So, uh, you know, just uh, really, really interesting to see, even the pass-throughs, to see what these were doing as they went through the gel block. So, all right, guys, as always, thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, once again, if you're interested in this content, you've got some buddies in a group or friends who would be interested in this, feel free to scroll down there underneath the video. There's a button that says share. Click that, copy that link, paste it in a text, paste it in a group on uh, Facebook, uh, you know, wherever you can paste that information. 
and, and, and share some of these videos for me. I, I would appreciate that. Like I said earlier in one of the other videos, this is the best way to support my channel um, is actually just bringing, uh, bringing people into my channel for the views, which helps generate revenue that offsets my cost. Uh, and also, uh, it, it builds my subscribers and, and it changes the algorithm. And uh, I've had a big hit. You guys have been a big help the last couple of months. My algorithm has really changed. My views and everything have, have skyrocketed. And, and I thank you guys for that because you guys are the ones that are responsible for that. I do the content. You bring in the, uh, you bring in the likes and, the, and, the, and change the algorithm to where my stuff gets out there in front of more people. So, all right, guys. Matt, Kentucky Range Time. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.